Behold! Finally! I've done it! It's alive! What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and welcome back. Now, for those of you that have followed me for a long time, I've always been a hardware guy. My TikTok channel showed off some of my earlier boards, and I've been making Yeti boards for a long time. It's really something I enjoy doing. Now, when Dave over at Tektronix reached out to me and said he had a completely different board, of course, I said I wanted to check it out. And wow, he did not disappoint. This was something I've never seen before with so many options, so much flexibility, so many ways of using it that I've never ever thought of before. Now, this isn't just any dev board. I've reviewed tons in the past from some other really great creators, but this one is just completely different. So this is gonna be a whole different kind of board review. So sit back, relax, let's get at it. Now, as I said before, this is not your typical run-of-the-mill dev board like all of these. Uh, these are all purpose-built for one specific thing. This device actually allows you to use all of these and a lot more. Now, this is less of a dev board where you're going to bring it around and use it in the field, more so as it's a development platform, a STEM platform. It's a learning platform. It's so cool. Well, that's enough introduction. Let's get right into it. So here it is right here. We have the Dolphin Experimenter board right here. It comes with a ESP32 room. We love those. It comes with an ESP8266 as well. Those are a little bit more kind of outdated from a technology standpoint, but it comes with one you can play with, which is really cool. We have the HC SR04 uh, radar or a sonar detector, not radar. Um, we've got a small NRF24, and we've got a couple temperature sensors. It also comes with a bunch of DuPont wires, which you can never have enough of. Also, to round out the whole project, it does come with this RFID tag and a couple NTAG215 NFC tags. Now, this is more of an educational platform than something that you're meant to carry around with you. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take the little foam insert from the dev board. Dev board. From the, uh, the silicone case. Put it right underneath there, and that's going to support things while I'm showing off how everything works. I guess one of the easier things to start off with is actually to show off the really cool sonar detector. So this little guy, and I'll move it up here. I probably can't focus, but yeah, this is actually a range detector. So we'll take it, plug it into the front right here. Boom, boom. And then I'm on the latest version of Rogue Master. You can tell we've got the new Wii menu that's been implemented. Super cool. Um, let's go over to applications. Oops, I skipped it. I do that all the time. Do, 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 do. Where'd we go? Apps. We're going to go down to GPIO. And then we're going to go down to where are we at here? Sonar. There's so many apps in this now. Wow, it's crazy. There we go. Distance sensor. Shebang. And all we do, anytime we press the button here, it's going to give us a distance reading. So right now is 0 0.098 meters between basically the sonar detector and whatever's in front of it. Now, if I go ahead and put my hand in front of it as such, you'll notice that the numbers change and it shows that things are even closer. Further away, whoops, doop, it shows further away. Super simple, super cool, but like, yeah, all you gotta do is plug things into this board and you can play with almost anything. That's what she said. <laughs> So let's go ahead and back out of that. Let's go back to the main menu and let's check out an NRF 24. Now it does come with this NRF 24 here. However, I really do like my bigger NRF 24s. So I'll just go ahead and grab this guy. Nice and chunky boy. Plug that guy in. Now, if you remember from our mouse jacking video, we have the infamous Logitech dongle. Let me plug that in and see if I can get this to sniff. Now that we've got everything plugged in, let's go ahead and load up the NRF sniffer. So go to GPIO and scroll all the way down to NRF, do, do NRF 24. And we're gonna go to the skiffer, skiffer, <laughs> the sniffer, not the scanner. Let's drop us down to 2000 milliseconds. And before I click scan, I'm gonna actually already start holding buttons down on my keyboard. And let's go. Let's see if this works. After these messages, we'll be right back. 
And there we go. We found one already right there says found. Boom. It works. All right. So we've got our range detector. We've got our mouse jacker sniffer. Super cool. Let's see what else we can do. Let's drop back to the main menu. Whoop, get out of here. All right, next we're gonna check out the ESP32 room. Now, I've already gone ahead and flashed this guy with Marauder. It actually has outlines of where all these boards go. So, whoops, turn it around because you notice the antenna matches up with there. This is the rover side and plug that in and boom, we're ready to go. Let's take a look at Marauder. Back into our applications. Gonna go over to GPIO again. Roll down to ESP32 Wi-Fi Marauder. And go ahead to show everything's working, run an AP scan. And of course, there we go. It's working as usual. So many cool things already, all in one. So yeah, I mean, again, it's not something you're gonna necessarily carry around with you, but I can do all these things at the same time. Let me go ahead and stop this scan so I can stop blurring the screen. But Amelia from Discord actually did me a huge favor. I sent one of these over to her and she did all of the research for me to kind of help me understand what's going on a little bit easier. And one of the things that she had mentioned is that the ESP32 can actually interfere with our range detector. So, you know, you might not want to use both of those at the same time. Really not a big deal. So let's drop back to the main menu and let's see what else we can show you. So let's take a look at the uh, temperature and humidity sensors. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out our Yoink. distance sensor because that activates five volt, which we don't want. Gonna go ahead and take our little guy here, plug it in here. And then let's go to applications. Gonna go down to GPIO. And we're gonna go to the I squared C tools. And that's gonna tell us the address of our uh, temperature sensor. There we are, scan. Whoops, doesn't show up, scan again. There we go. So it's 0x38. So we're gonna go ahead and go back from there, then go down to our temperature sensor down here, temperature sensor reader, add new sensor. And this guy is an AHD10. So we're gonna scroll down to that, AHT10. And we're at 38, which is correct. Save and boom, here we go. We have our temperature and our humidity. Freaking awesome. Drop back out of here to the main menu. Show you some other cool stuff because there's just so many cool things about this board. Other cool feature is that this whole top row right here, that's actually just the normal pinouts for, you know, the normal top of the flipper. So I can take the uh, Rabbit Labs IR blaster, plug that right in there. And then boom, that'll work, no problem. Let me just go ahead and activate five volts. GPIO, and then five volt on, boom. And now it's working just like it normally would. Super, super cool. Back to the main screen. Pop that out. Eh. So possibly one of my favorite things is the breadboard. So this whole area right here is a breadboard. So these three rows and these three rows are, you know, just a normal breadboard rows. So this column of three is bridged. This column of three is bridged. So again, it works just like a normal breadboard. So let's skip into a time lapse and I'll show you how all that works. Although first, let me unplug these guys. That's gonna come out. This is gonna come out. There we go. And then I have this guy right here is just the exact same ESP32 that we were using before, but I put a little animated GIF player on there and it's gonna interface with one of my TFT screens. So check it out. go this skid finder 9000 lives on if we want to be extra fancy we can actually pull the ground from up here move it down here hello so hard to see whoops that's not the right one ground here there we go and then replace this 
LED. Oops, wrong way. Restart with an LED. Tricolor, of course. So yeah, it's a pretty cool project. I mean, the breadboard really opens up for almost anything. You can put so much cool stuff on this. Now, I know this may seem a bit overwhelming, and you know, there's a lot going on in this board. You can do literally anything you want, but that's kind of the beauty of all of it. When I started using breadboards back in the day, it really changed the game, especially when it came for building things on Flipper, so I could prototype them before I actually build them. Now with this board, I can literally build crazy, the craziest stuff ever, and it's all actually self-contained, so that's really freaking cool. That's the Dolphin Experimenters board from Kektronics, pronounced Tektronics. Thanks a lot, Dave, for sending it my way. We've had a lot of fun playing with it. Myself as well as Amelia, it's been an absolute blast learning how to use it. Check out Tektronics.com, link down below, for $10 off using code Sasquatch. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel tremendously. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We're going to catch you next time. <laughs>